This is the guts of a very early production Texas Instruments TI-58C scientific calculator. Uh, this particular one is from uh, week 26 of 1979, so mid-July thereabouts. Um, so this is one of the earliest ones. Um, principal reason for doing this video is basically is a um, comparison of the, between the uh, TI-58, which is the older version of this particular calculator, and more, and more recent production uh, TI-58Cs. Um, some of the things that are more like the TI-58 are this pair of stacked memory chips, even though the actual chips are different. Uh, the uh, CD-2401 and the CD-2400, which is under it, they're actually piggybacked, which is somewhat unusual there. And uh, every corresponding pin on each chip is connected together, so any addressing differences between these two must be then silicon. Of course, that's an educated guess, ju ju judging by the uh, simple fact that I can't find any data sheets on pretty much any of these chips. Um, whereas in the TI-58C, or, or more recent ones, these two would be side by side and there'd be four chips here. Um, likewise in the TI-58C, this uh, single, this uh, daughter board um, power supply thing, which I mentioned, it's probably just a um, Ryer oscillator or something, judging by uh, the fact that it's only got uh, one transformer. That's up here, and uh, this capacitor is shifted over. And there'd be, but there'd be a, in the more recent ones, there's a uh, another smaller electrolytic capacitor about where this one is. And uh, this capacitor would be over here. Also interesting to note that from the uh, wave soldering bath, it's uh, melted the uh, silk screen on the uh, capacitor there, just poking through that hole in the PCB. Those two chips are just um, uh, display driver buffer things for the uh, liquid cri or for the uh, light emitting diode display. Um, there's this set of contacts, which are for a printer cradle, which I think also provides power to this thing, uh, that this can slot into. And there's that, which is a, a Toshiba TC5047AP-1. That's just a uh, memory device. And the uh, TMC0501NL, that's just the um, actual calculator chip. Then there's this one, which is an interface device. This chip down here, which is interfacing for the uh, memory module that would go in there, that's just a um, an SO8 package, which is you know quite early for packages of that type, although this is sufficiently old, it might even be a Dell, certainly big enough. But I can't easily non-destructively open that, so I'm not gonna, because um, I'd like to get this thing working. And then of course this uh, bunch of, uh, I'm guessing bus bias resistors, um, in the uh, later versions of the TI-58C, they're just conventional quarter watt ones instead of these eighth or one eighth watt ones, and they're taking up the space that uh, this power supply thing would, because this is the location of this power supply thing in the TI-58. And yes, all these epoxy blob tanks will be replaced at some point uh, if I can. Um, some of this thing works. And there's this, um, which is just a connector for the charger, it's the, it's the same on both. But on the board photos that I've seen, this made in Canada mark and is not there. Likewise, that one resistor located right there isn't. And this assembly thing is from the TI-58. Those uh, marks for the polarity, those I made, just you know, as, as a reference thing because it doesn't say anything about this because it takes a special proprietary uh, battery cartridge. Although you can find tutorials on how to build your own replacements, because obviously how to get replacement parts for a calculator that's you know, 36 years old. And also one little interesting tidbit is that this employs switching on the DC neutral instead of the DC hot. So you follow the traces and they go right back to the switch with the uh, DC neutral connection. And there's some diodes here which <coughs> are for the uh, grads bridge for the rectifier because the um, charging port supplies AC that's why you see warnings about never running these calculators without a battery pack installed unless you're running them on a regulated DC supply 
feeding that directly into the uh, battery contacts because these are relying on the battery pack to serve as a combination ripple suppression device and shunt regulator. And of course, if you, it would mean that um, you'd, the logic would see north of five volts if the battery weren't there, and it would let out the magic smoke in here. Little, don't know if it'd be enough energy to make little tinkling noises inside the case when the chip's blowing up, but they certainly wouldn't be happy, and they would like, know it in various sensory ways. So, yeah, quite interesting. And then there's just a uh, little bit of solder flux schmoo around these because these are obviously soldered in after this board is placed on is otherwise fully populated and uh, stuck on top of the keyboard module just 14 pins which is what you would expect from a 45 pin uh, or what from a 45 button key matrix and then there's just the connections for the um, LEDs there